This is the 2015 Kia Sorento SX all-wheel drive. You know Kia is doing all it can to steal bargain hunting buyers from luxury automakers. So let's see if it's mission accomplished, shall we? I'm Miles Brandman, and you're watching FL Detours. So the midsize crossover slash SUV market is pretty stacked. There's an offering from almost every major automaker. But if you're on a budget, your options are somewhat limited to things like the Hyundai Santa Fe, the Nissan Murano, the Ford Edge, and this, the 2015 Kia Sorento. Now right here, we've got the SX all-wheel drive version. And what that means is that this thing is fully loaded to the gills. You can get into a Sorento for under 25 grand, which is pretty great. And you can have things like the 3.3 liter V6 and the all-wheel drive system for around early 30s. But this one is just under 40 grand and it has absolutely everything that you could possibly want from a luxury crossover. But there are a few distinctions that separate it from things like the Acura MDX and BMW X1. I'll get to those in a minute. But let's talk about some of the things that make this car really exceptional. You've got features like panoramic sunroof, LED daytime running lamps, 19-inch alloy wheels, heated and cooled leather seats. There's also an extra row of seating to fit seven. Some pretty impressive stuff at under 40 grand. In fact, some of the coolest features about this car are the tech and safety goodies. So you get things you've come to expect like Bluetooth and, in some cars, blind spot monitoring systems. But you also have a pretty killer infotainment system in this car with really responsive design. Then, you also have some class leading features like this really crisp LCD display. Everything kind of just pops really well with it, and I haven't found another SUV that has something this cool. So how does it drive? This is where things get a little interesting. With 290 horsepower and an all-wheel drive system, obviously, it's faster than a P1, handles better than a 2. Well, not really, but it's actually pretty punchy. The engine certainly goes, and the transmission isn't half bad. I'll talk about that more in a second. And it doesn't hate to change direction, that's for sure. There's actually three steering mode selections as well. You've got comfort, normal, and sport. Sport actually does a couple things too. It makes it feel a little weightier, and the responsiveness is there. However, when you're cruising at speed, it does take a little more adjustment than some of the more refined luxury cars like the Acura MDX and BMW X1. That said, the ride is phenomenal. And I'm not just talking about cars in this segment, I'm talking about luxury cars as well. The ride is pretty exceptional. It soaks up all the road blemishes without any drama, and it's just a pleasant place to be for daily driving. It's comfortable. You want to spend more time here. As with any car though, it can't be all praise. So I'll talk about some of the things that could be improved in future generations. For me personally, the overall look can be improved. It's not bad in any way, shape or form. It just doesn't take a stance for design. And when you're fighting with things from BMW and Acura and Mercedes and other luxury automakers, you need a compelling design. You need a reason why people would give your car a second look. This doesn't do that other things that can be improved. As I mentioned, when driving at speed with this car, you gotta do a little too much with the wheel. You're constantly adjusting or else the car will just start to carry itself one way or another. Not terrible, just something you have to pay attention to that you may not have to with another car. I'm getting real nitpicky now, but things like automatic up and down windows, for almost 40 grand, you should probably have that in the car. Other small things like the automatic trunk latch, it took us a second to figure out where it was. I've seen it all over, you know, near the driver before, but I have not seen it here next to the sunroof, so that took us a second to figure out. You'd get used to it, but just something to keep in mind. The only other somewhat large distinction between this and a sportier luxury car would be the transmission. As I said, the engine packs a lot of power in the 3 liter V6, 3.3 liter V6, but the transition between gears 
isn't as quick on the uptake as some of the other competitors. So I think if they can sharpen that up a bit, make the shifts a little faster, they've really got a killer performer here. Because it's not a sports car, but if you do want to get in here and have a little pep, and you put it in manual mode, and you want to shift for yourself, some sportiness and quick shifting will really go a long way. So putting the pieces together, I'm a big fan of this crossover. He has done a great job, and I know they're only going to improve in future iterations. They haven't been at this that long. So for what they're showing me right now, I know a couple years down the line, I'm going to have a ton of respect for them. Not that I don't already right now. You need to take a second look at Kia, and you need to take a second look at something like this. Some of the big things that are wins for this crossover right here, as I mentioned, the engine has really got some pep. It's kind of awesome. The ride quality is amazing. I'm very comfortable pretty much at all times when I'm driving this. Things to improve are among the little things, like recess the infotainment system so there's not so much glare. Take a look around at what other automakers have done with their crossovers and maybe add some of those features in that you might be missing. Larger issues, take a stance on the design. Really take a risk and see what happens. I guarantee it's gonna pay off. So if you're thinking, you know, my wife's mentioned maybe I'll get a minivan. I could, I could deal with that, you know, take the kids around in that. Maybe it's not your only car. I'll have something else that I can work out with. Grow a pair. Don't do that. Don't get a minivan. You don't want to be the guy who you know your friend's going to say, your wife wears the pants in your relationship. You can't deny it if you're driving a minivan. Go pick up a quality product like this Kia Sorento, and you'll thank yourself immediately. Just do it. It's a great car. So for 38 grand, Kia's given you plenty of ammo to fight off your spouse's desire to buy a minivan. And they've also given you a reason to think twice about spending the extra cashish on a luxury automaker's crossover. I'm Miles Brandman. This was the 2015 Kia Sorento SX all-wheel drive, and you've been watching FLD Tours. We'll see you next time.